Welcome back traders. All right, let's go through what MetaTrader is and how it's going to help us and basically how the whole layout works. It can be a little daunting at first, so we're going to break it down into smaller sections. First of all, the main screen of MetaTrader, what, what you're seeing in front of you right now. This is everything that we need in order to trade. It's broken into different areas of the screen. We have the main menu, which gives you access to all the programs in various menu settings. The next we have the toolbars, which are basically it's a quick access to the various programs and features that MetaTrader offers. We also have the market watch window, which will show real time quotes for specific currencies and, and various other indexes that we might have loaded up. It can also be changed across to a tick chart. You can also select one of the different currency pairs or anything else on the market watch window and have a look at the tick chart. And the tick chart gives you very up to date information on the price changes itself. The next window is the navigator window. This is a way that you can quickly find various indicators and if you have expert advisors installed or access to different trading accounts and that sort of thing, you can all find it inside the navigator window. And then the bottom section is the terminal section. This is where you can view your open trades, your account history. A lot of information is held inside here, although we haven't placed any trades yet. So that side of it is not there. We can look at some of the news events, which are fed through by CM trading. And later on, when we have alerts and that sort of thing, they will be monitored inside here. For now, the most important two tabs in the terminal window will be trade. And remember that will show our current and existing trades and account history, which will show trades that we have closed. Then the most important part of the window is the chart window. This is the main area of the screen, which takes up the lion's share of your desktop real estate. And this is where we're going to be looking and analyzing the charts so that we can make our decisions as to whether we should buy, sell or stay out of the market. One of the very nice features in MetaTrader is the ability to move things around how we would like them to be. For example, if you'd like the market watch to rather hover over your chart, you can click on the menu and drag it. And as soon as you let go, it'll pop out. You can also resize it to make it larger if you'd like, or shrink it down. This can be useful if you're trying to see several symbols all at the same time to get this sort of information. And another nice ability with market watch is let's say you're watching the Australian US dollar and you'd like to have a quick look at what's happening there. You can select it in your market watch, click and then drop it on a chart and it will update showing you that information. I can resize the window like that just to make it a little bit clearer. What I'm going to do is go ahead and close these charts so we can start fresh. You'll see that we had multiple charts in there. Each of them had the option to expand, minimize or close. We're getting rid of all of them. I'm going to put market watch back where it was just by clicking and dragging it there. And now it's over there. I don't use the navigator that much and so I'm going to be closing it because I find this is more useful than the navigator. And I'm actually also going to close market watch. It is displaying a lot of information here, uh, most of which we won't really be using. You'll see as we go through the course, how looking at the actual numbers doesn't really matter as much as looking at the chart. So let's go and get rid of that market watch. Now, as you can see, the chart window, the chart space, is now this huge main area on our monitor. Even the screen that I'm displaying on now is only 720p. This is a lot of room that we can look at our charts. So let's go ahead and start looking at the menu options so that we can load a new chart. So now that we have all of the space dedicated to our chart window, let's go ahead and add a chart. One thing about MetaTrader is that they like to offer people a lot of different options to do the same thing. So look at the different ways and see which one you're more comfortable with. For example, adding a new chart, we can either look for this button over here, create new chart, and then select whichever chart we would like and click and it will load. Or you can go to file and select new chart and it'll bring up the same information. So let me use the button. This is the way that I usually do it. I just click to create a new chart and let's play with the Euro dollar. 
After a few seconds, it downloads all of the historical data as well so that we can look back in time. And now we have our Euro dollar chart open. Each chart that's open, we can minimize, maximize, or close it inside the chart window. Let's maximize it. Now we have a full view of how the Euro dollar has been responding. Let's keep moving along the different toolbar options that we have. So now we've learned how to add a new chart. We can also select profiles. This will become a little more important later on. Basically, once you have several charts loaded and how you want everything set up, you can save it as a profile so it's easy for you to reaccess the way that you have everything set up. And by switching between profiles, it will allow you to change a lot of things very, very quickly. The market watch that we had open before, you can click on it here to quickly bring it back. And you can click again to get rid of it. The same applies for a data window. The data window is quite interesting. Once it's open up and you move your mouse over the chart, you'll see that it's showing you a lot of information. Wherever you set the mouse, it will show you the exact date and time that that candle opened, as well as the open, high, low, close price. We don't really use the volume that much, but the important parts would be time, date, and then obviously the open, high, low, and close. But we can see that information elsewhere, so I'm not going to use the data window. I can either click on the option here, or I can click over there to get rid of it. The next one is the navigator. We had a look at that a bit earlier, and we can click to close it. The next option is the terminal at the bottom. This you will find you generally do keep open a lot of the time. If you do want to get rid of it to see a chart, you can click on the terminal button here and you can click on it again to bring it back. I'm going to leave mine open. The strategy tester is quite an interesting feature inside MetaTrader. If you have an expert advisor that will allow you to trade automatically, you can load it up here and test it based on historical data. One thing to keep in mind is that a lot of these expert advisors will test very differently using historical data than it does in real time. So never expect it to work quite as well so even if your test results are incredibly positive, that does not mean it will actually make money in the future. This course is about teaching you how to trade and you to make the decisions, so we don't need to rely on these sorts of things anyway. So I can click here to close it, or I can click up at this button again to close it there. That's the end of the first part of the toolbars. The next one that we're looking at is the new order button. This one is obviously very, very important. You can either select it over here by clicking on New Order to load it up, or you can press the F9 key. Alternatively, you can select Tools and New Order. So there's quite a few different options for you to place in New Order. Let me load that window up again and we'll have a look at it. You'll see here that it automatically brings up the symbol of whatever chart was active. So if you have four or five different currency pairs open, whichever one was the last one you used, i.e. the one that is active in MetaTrader, the symbol will automatically be put in there. The volume is in lots. So when we're looking at a volume of 1.0, that is not $1, that is one lot, which is 100,000. The stop loss is the price level where you would like to set your stop loss. Your take profit is the price level where you'd like to set your take profit. Comment is only useful for you. It appears in your account history. So if you're placing a trade but you're not comfortable with it, perhaps you want to put that in the comments. Or if you're placing it because of a news event, you might want to put it in there as well. So in a month or two's time when you're looking at your account history, you will see the comments which will explain why you did what you did. Type is market execution. This is because it is an instant order. We can also select pending orders. This will be discussed in more detail later in the course. You'll see here we have two different prices. We have one for sell by market and one for buy by market. If we believe the currency pair is going to be dropping, so the charts are going to be going down, we will want to sell. If we believe that the charts are going to be heading up, then we'll want to buy. Now, your broker will charge you different rates depending on what you're doing. For example, if we're selling, CM Trading will charge us a slightly different price to the actual value. The same with buying. 
The difference between the two prices is what we call the spread. So you'll see here they have a very reasonable rate at CM Trading. We're looking at 2.5 pips. I'm not going to be entering a trade just yet. We'll cover that a bit later. The next button will load up the MetaQuotes language editor or MQL. We will not be covering this as it is more of a programming side of things and it is also not necessary at all. The auto trading button is very important. If you've been installing expert advisors which can trade on your behalf and you've been testing them out, you can sometimes use them just to bring up a pop-up, just to give you advice or maybe show you a trade that you wouldn't have picked up before. But these things can also trade automatically. Now this could be quite dangerous because if you've been playing around with it and just testing it out and that sort of thing and then it does actually trade automatically for you, it could cost you a lot of money. So with this auto trading button, if I click on it, you see we have the green play. That means it will allow our expert advisors to actually place trades. If you had the red stop, it will not allow them to place trades. So even if the EA is set up to be allowed to place a trade and everything else is good to go, if this button is red, it will stop it from being able to place a trade. So keep that red.